chapter number three, working with selections. Let's break down how this all works. Now, what is the basic of a selection tool anyway? Well, a selection allows you to isolate a part of a picture. Once you've isolated a part of a picture, you can then color or manipulate or use a filter or copy or move that part of the selection. We can see these little marquee tools here. And as I start to have this area selected, I cannot actually delete or copy or in effect any other portion of the picture. So I come up with a brush and I'm going to paint. It will only paint inside the box, no matter if I paint outside the box or that selection with my brush. If I go into a uh, filter and I go to an adjustments and a levels or curves, go ahead and turn that off so we don't see anything in the way. And I come up here and create a levels or curves setting. It will only be affected in the selected area. Whereas if I have nothing selected, I'm going to go up to select and deselect to turn it off or control D or command D on a Mac. Nothing is selected. Now, any of my filters can affect any of my surface area, my canvas area, my working area. Or if I'm using my filter, it will affect everywhere on the piece because nothing is selected, then everything is editable. So selections are a way to isolate, to make it depend on a certain area to give a certain effect, which is super, super helpful. So there's four areas we're going to look at. There's the content and edge based selections, which in your tools panel, we're going to come up to our fourth option down, and then we're going to see object selection tool and quick selection tool. What those will do, those are looking based on different computer automizations, what the shape is. It tries, the Photoshop will start to uh, learn to identify subjects with that particular area based on contrast, based on a number of different factors. It will try to pull that area out of a subject matter. And they're actually getting pretty good in Photoshop. A few versions of Go, they might not have been as good, but they're really getting pretty good in their artificial intelligence. But there is an automatic process. I'm using them more and more because they do save me a lot of time to do my nitpicky, heavy selections of maybe more detailed areas. Well, that's not to be said that if you're shooting a photograph, or if you're looking for photographs and stock images or graphics, having good contrast between your person and the background is still helpful in the selection being more accurate. Uh, but uh, it will do a pretty good job nowadays. The second section you want to look at is the color-based selections. Color-based selections. Now, if you pull open our object-based selection tool, the object selection tool, quick selection, there is the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool is one of the I believe original to Photoshop, it's been around for a long, long time, where it's selecting an image based on the similarity in pixel color. So once I have a wand chosen, I can choose based on how much color I want, uh, or what points, or how many points, an average point, and it will select anything close to that click based on its particular color. Things that are darker or a different color won't be selected as much. We also have our geometric selections. These give us the shapes like the rectangle tool, the elliptical tool, the single rule, or the single column marquee tool, which allow you to select just a pixel or two with a single column, or to select an area of the frame. And then the last category in the book, the freehand selections. The freehand selections. So I'm going to go ahead and unselect everything. And to find my free selections, I'm going to go to the third section click and drag over and I have the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. And these options allow me to select based on a freehand tool. I can use a stylus or some type of device where you can write on your screen nowadays and select a portion of the picture by just tracing with my mouse or with your stylus and getting it to select the area that you want. It's a freehand option. The automatic tools are the polygonal lasso tool. There's times you might want a nice hard edge. It gives you a very straight edge to edge shape and form. There are times that can be very, very useful. Even with some of the automatic shapes out there today in terms of content edge based selections or even color based selections, which are getting pretty accurate nowadays. So let's get started. First, you'll look at the image that you find. This is the finalized piece that you'll start with. And you'll start with something like this from chapter three in the book selections that it gives you. The book recommends that you start with clicking Control Alt Shift in Windows or Command Option Shift in a Mac to restore some of your default preferences. So if you've got something messed up in some of your settings, it will be changed the way that the book is set up. The book has a process of opening up Adobe Bridge and finding the 
03 start process. You can double click that open. You can find it in many different ways using the bridge. Uh, I like prefer, I prefer to use the file and open process to find it on my project. You can find it anyway. If you're using the cloud subscription portion of your Adobe CC license, uh, the book goes through some ways to use the cloud documents. Photoshop documents can be awfully large, uh, giving you high resolution images, which means high file size, which can be kind of bulky to transfer back and forth. If you're using Photoshop on both a computer and, say, something like an Apple iPad, uh, you can save your image to the cloud and you can have access to both of them quite easily, which is actually kind of handy. If you want to go ahead and save it as a cloud document, you can change the extension to a Photoshop.psdc for cloud, which actually wasn't in one of the options here. I'm going to go ahead and hit push C. And hit save. Now that you've got it saved as a Photoshop C file, you could actually find it in the cloud. My cloud is actually too large. I've been using it a little bit, and it's become too full. But you could find your access to your cloud storage and find your piece if you have storage device in your subscription based on how much size you have in your file. And here is the file to start with, the original that the book comes up with. Now I can go to File and hit Save As. I'm going to hit Save As, and then we're going to save it as 03working.psd. So first, let's start with the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool is the color-based selection tool, which allows us to choose based on our particular color. So for this piece, we're going to go ahead and use the color uh, wand tool, which is the four section underneath. Click and drag out from the object selection tool. I have my magic wand tool. Under the magic wand tool, there's some settings that the book recommends. As we're going to look at the options panel, and we're going to have the tolerance set to 32, which it is by default. This value determines the range of colors the wand selects. A smaller number will be more precise, and a larger number will allow you to have a, a broader area. There's a little bit of variety in the color. Look here, the silver dollar isn't completely all the same color. There's a little bit of variety in the types of colors of the silver dollar. For starters, I'm going to go ahead and click the red portion of the background, not the silver dollar itself. I click the red portion, and it does a really good job of selecting all the red portion and excluding the silver dollar selection. Of course, this is different because we want to have the whole shell selected and not the background. So let's go ahead and start over. We'll go to Select, Deselect. Now nothing is selected. Now we're going to position the Magic Wand tool over the silver dollar and click. If you look carefully, it's not completely selected. There are parts of it that aren't completely selected. But notice that some areas are selected because the colors differ from the color you clicked more than 32, 32 levels in the tolerance setting. So the current selection isn't working because it doesn't include all of the silver dollars or all of the interior colors. What we want to do is to select the subjects with that most, if not all, the same color and value against a relatively solid background. Now we can fix this by increasing the tolerance value. Of course, the more complex the subject or the background, the more likely a wide variety of tolerance will have to select the unwanted parts as well. So if the number gets too high, you'll select portions that you probably don't want selected. We'll go to Select, Deselect. So that wasn't necessarily the best tool, but we'd give it a shot. So using the Quick Selection tool, which is inside that same set, Quick selection tool allows me to click on an area to give it some type of selection. So in the options panel, we go ahead and make sure the enhanced edge is on, which it now is. Selecting the enhanced edge should greatly improve the quality of selection with edges that are a truer, sharper to the object. If you're using an older or slower computer, it might not work as well because it does take some computer processing, which can slow it down a fair amount. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag around this portion, and it does a pretty good job of clicking and dragging and selecting the entire silver dollar. The big part is you don't want to actually cross over into part of the background because then it will start to select the background as well. I want to isolate it just to the silver dollar. So this tool did actually a really good job on handling the selection. Now the quick selection tool is looking at the content that you clicked in and the area that you're dragging in and it will have an automatic approach to it. So if you're not careful and you do go over the edges, that's when you get the problems. But the quick selection tool doesn't complete the selection initially. Click or drag over the areas you want to add to the selection. If it selects too much of the area, I can go ahead and hold Alt, and it'll give you the little minus sign in the circle. It can start to select parts of it away. 
but for the most part, it did a pretty good job that I don't have to remove portions of the selection. So now I'm going to move this silver dollar into what is the section A on the piece. So I've selected my silver dollar. I'm going to go ahead and use the Move tool, which is up here on the keyboard. Go ahead and click and drag with the Move tool. And now notice it's cutting out the silver dollar into the area. I don't want to fill that shadowed area best as I can. It might not necessarily be perfect, but get it close. And now my silver dollar is there. Notice the selection, the marching ants are still in that same area. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit File and Deselect. But notice when that's done now, this is all part of the same layer. I cannot move it independent of itself. So now that the selection made and it's unselected, it is now permanently altered or destroyed the silver dollar in the original position. Now it would become a little trickier to select it in that particular background. Book recommends go ahead and hit Control S to save your work. Or go up to File and Save as well. But I already did, so it doesn't give me that option. Now, just like there's one more way to skin a cat, there's also one more way to deselect an area. So if I have my area selected, I can go ahead and go up to Select and Deselect. I can also go ahead and just use the shortcut Control D or Command D on a Mac. And the shortcut will work just as well. So now using the Object Selection tool. The Object Selection tool is all you have to do is draw a rough selection around the object you want to select. And the Object Selection tool identifies the object and creates a tight selection for it. For an object that has a complicated outline, such as the corral in this example, we're going to go ahead and do a pretty good job of selecting over this particular type. So we're going to go ahead and go into our fourth section down over to the Object Selection tool. We're going to hover over our selection of the corral, making sure we're above the whole portion. I'm going to click and drag and let it go. And let the computer do some processing, and it does a pretty good job of selecting the corral based on the white background with this particular selection. Based on your computer speed, it might be a little bit slower if you have a slower computer. Then we can go ahead and use the Move tool at the top here, the very first one. I'm going to go ahead and show another option, which is uh, holding Control. Control allows me to have the Move tool temporarily while remaining the previous tool, which is the Object Selection tool. So I'm holding Control. I'm going to drag it over, put it on the B section here, and let it go. It's still selected, so I can still maneuver it a little bit if I want. You can also know in a selection, a way to maneuver that selection is to click and drag, but I can use control on the arrow keys, and the control on the arrow keys will move it a pixel at a time. Control shift will actually move it 10 pixels at a time. For the next step, we're going to go ahead and deselect. I'm going to hit control D, or we're going to go up to select and dis deselect for in the menu. Manipulating selections. You can move selections, reposition them, uh, duplicate them, do all kinds of different things to a selection. Most methods work with but any selection. You can also use the elliptical marquee tool, which lets you select the ovals or perfect circles. One of the most useful things in this section is the introduction of the modifier keys that can save you time and arm motions. So let's look at re repositioning a selection marquee while creating it. So with the ellipse tool, which is the third section over, with the ellipse tool, which is the second section, the marquee tool, we will go to the elliptical marquee tool. The elliptical tool can be a little bit tricky to use to get the perfect alignment on the circle. Now we want to use a couple different steps here. We want to get the idea of the alignment between the plate and the plate. I'm going to go ahead and drag it about there. And that's not a perfect job. I need to probably go a little bit wider there. And it can take some practice to get it right. But as I search that tool, we're going to get it about right, which works pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on our so we'll use the hand tool. I'm holding spacebar to move the hand tool to get a closer selection. And about there. And that does a pretty good job of getting the plate selected. Not perfect, but it's getting it pretty close as I select that particular method. It's okay if your selection doesn't match perfectly on the place yet. That's okay. Now to get it perfectly takes some practice and it might not be coming naturally to you. If I go ahead and hold the space bar, it allows me, while holding the space bar, to move that circle a little bit more. Give a better selection. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it over, hold about the size of the plate, and I'll hold space bar, and I can actually maneuver that a little bit tighter. Getting a better selection by holding space bar allows me to modify that selection all the better. 
Now go ahead and zoom out. The book recommends you go up to View, go to Fit on Screen to zoom out a bit. Another shortcut is Control Zero to make it fill all the way to the frame. Now notice the elliptical option is still selected. It's still hovering the merchant ants over the platter. From this point, we'll go ahead and move the selected pixels with a keyboard shortcut. So with the selection still selected, I'm going to go ahead and control on the Windows or command on the Mac and hover the pointer over the selection. It gives me the little scissors tool with the black mouse tool. Clicking that and dragging allows me to move the whole object over to the portion that it needs to be in the letter C and let go. And my selection has moved now into the appropriate manner with the cut tool. You can also make minor adjustments to the selection using the arrow keys. So holding control, the nudge tool, or having the move tool already selected, allows me to move one pixel at a time, or shift and clicking allows me to move 10 pixels at one particular time. Give me some different options on how I move it around. Another selection option is we're going to go ahead and soften the edges of the selection. The sharp anti-aliasing outline of the tools like the marquee tool, the lasso tool, and other selections give you a nice controlled hard edge to our platter. Now we can add some feathering to the edges, blurring the edges with some different techniques. To do so, with our marquee tool, we can choose the marquee tool, the selection of the rectangular, the elliptical, or whatever tool we have, and we can come up here and add a feathering process. So the anti-aliasing is there for the crisp sharpness. We can add a feathering process. You can go from anywhere from 1 to 250 pixels to have a less or a more feathered approach. If I already have an existing selection, which I do with this plate, it's already selected, and I've not, I not have to worry about the settings here, I can go up to Select, Modify, and Feather through this setting. And then allow it to have a modifying of the same effect as doing it after the fact, after the selection is made, and it can adjust the options bar back into the future, back into the past. Now we can see the margin ends, but sometimes when you have a very precise selection, it's hard to tell if the mouse is perfectly. Now, with some selections, it's hard to tell is it exactly a perfect selection because the margin ends does get a little bit in the way on your screen. So to tell that, we can actually go ahead and go to View, Show, and turn selection edges off. That will temporarily hide that selection. Now it is still actually there. Going up to view, show, select exit off. It can remove that while I still can actually use the selection key to move my shape. To bring back, I just go over to view, show, selection outlines, and it is still selected. I say move that around a little bit. So my selections where it needs to be. I can also temporarily hide the selection tools using the shortcut Control H will hide my selection or Control H to bring it back. So it's still selected, but it's not visible that the selecting marquee tool is still there by holding Control H or Command H to select or deselect that process. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D to make sure nothing is selected, save my work, and move on to the next step. Next we're going to look at the lasso tool. Selecting with lasso tools. As we mentioned earlier, Photoshop is three different lasso tools. Third section over, the lasso tool is the first one. Drag out, we have the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. So go ahead and zoom in a little bit on my project. I'm going to move into the next step, which is this little shell. We're going to go ahead and move into this muzzle, the next portion of the book. So I zoomed in a little bit. I'm using the lasso tool. Maybe zoom in just a little bit more. And using the lasso tool, I'm going to take a little bit of practice and try to straighten, draw around the muzzle. Now I will not do a perfect job. I've done it plenty over the years and I know I'm not going to be as precise to get that selection. But I can attempt to get all the way in and create a selection. Another alternative is to click and drag with the mouse. So when you get to a tough area that's a little harder, you can actually hold Alt and then let go of the mouse. It will temporarily give you the polygonal lasso tool. And you can start to click holding Alt and just clicking instead of dragging 
different portions of your muzzle. So as you get your different portions, spend your time on this one. I'm, you probably don't want to watch me do this. Holding Alt the entire time. Once you get close to it, let it go. And my selection is there. Not a perfect job, but this one's doing a pretty good job of selecting through the entire screen. On screen. I'm going to go ahead and fit on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Zero to make it fit on screen, or you can go up to View and Fit on Screen as well. Once I've got my setup here, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control on Windows, Command on a Mac, and drag the muzzle to the selection in Area B. Control temporarily gives me that Move tool into that area in B. Now I need to rotate the shell. To do so, I'm going to go to Edit, down to Transform, and over to Rotate. This allows me to take my selection tool and then to rotate it in increments. I'm going to have to choose at an angle and rotate it at 90 degrees. It will go freehand at first. If you hold the shift key, it will actually do it in 15 degree increments all the way to a precise 90 degrees. Now to accept this change, you need to hit the checkbox or enter on the keyboard or hit the cancel mark or the escape on the keyboard. But first I want to go ahead and move it around in the right area of the shadow so it covers that outlined set up by the book authors. Next, we're using the selecting with the magnetic lasso tool. Now, the magnetic lasso tool is a freehand selection with high contrast areas. Now, the magnetic lasso tool is helpful for freehand selections with some high contrast edges. So we're going to zoom into this shell. And we're going to use the magnetic lasso tool, which is under the lasso tool, under the last setting, magnetic lasso tool. So let's select that. Go ahead and start on a portion of the shell. I'm going to click and drag around, and at some point, it's actually going to go ahead and start to select automatically. Even if I'm not holding down a key, I'm not holding Alt like I did with the polygonal lasso tool and the regular lasso tool, but it starts to snap to that selection. The further you get, it starts to edge and particularly select that area, and it will automatically choose that selection based on your mouse coverage. Now, if you go off the way too much, it's going to get confused. And that's not going to work super well. And that can be confusing to the new leisure selection. But you want to keep close to your Nautilus shell and let it choose some of that contrast as you move your selection. When we get to the end, you'll see that little circle portion. I'm going to go ahead uh, inside the tool, the circle. As part of the tool, I'm going to go ahead and click. And now it will make the selection select my perfect. It's not a perfect job. I probably could have been a little more precise in the one corner. But it did a pretty good job of following that selection. Next, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. And then use the Move tool, or Control temporarily, if you want to keep the previous tool. Click and drag and put our shell into the area that we choose. Now we're going to use selecting from a center point. In most cases, it's easier to use the elliptical or the rectangular selections to draw a selection from an anchor's center point. But there's times you might want to use it from one side or the other. For this one, we'll go ahead and zoom in on the screw and select our screw. Now we're using the elliptical tool, which is a circular tool, which works well for the circular head of the screw. I'll go ahead and hit the elliptical tool, move the tool approximately to the center of the screw. So I'm going to get in the very center eyeballing the center of the screw. I'm going to start to click and drag, and then I'm going to hold Alt. Alt will allow me to use that as the center point. Holding Alt the entire time. Now I'll get the screw selected. I go ahead and let go. And that wasn't a perfect job, so I'm going to go ahead and Control D and start over a little lower down here. So click and start to drag. Hold Alt. So it gives me the screw about there, and then let go of the mouse and Alt, so my area is selected. 
So if you ever make a mistake, just control D to deselect or go to select and deselect your option. And then you can go ahead and just start over holding, clicking first and then holding alt after you've started to click and drag. So let's look at resizing and copying a selection. Now we're going to go ahead and move the screw into the lower right corner of the wooden picture frame. And then duplicate it into the four corners. So we'll start by actually making the screw a little bit too small because the screw is too large to begin with. So to resize it, we're going to go up to the Move tool, click our screw, drag it over the piece, and we can definitely notice that it is too large on the frame. To fix that, we're going to go up to Edit, Transform, and down to Scale. Now we've got the box here selecting the entire screw. Then we need to shrink the size. I'm going to go and zoom in a little bit so we can see that form. Go ahead and drag it smaller. It will make it by default proportioned. Now if I hold shift, I can skew it to make it fat or skinny holding shift. But by default, it will be smaller or larger to proportion. Book recommends going to about 40% of its original size. If you look at the top option panel, you can actually notice the size. So we'll go about 40% about there. You see the options panel, we have the numbers right on the screen. And drag it to the portion that we want, right in the middle of the frame, and let it go. You can actually move and duplicate a selection at the same time. To make a copy and to move to a different corner, a selection of the screw, we're going to go ahead and do that next. With the Move tool selected, I'm going to put Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, put it over my selection. So as I hover over my mouse onto the screw, I'm going to hold Alt first. You'll notice it has the white and black mouse selections right next to it. I'm going to click and drag over to the one side, move it in such a way. Now if you want to make your selection actually fit nicely in terms of a pure horizontal or vertical option, we can go ahead and hold Alt to give us a special move and hold Shift. Shift will keep it on a nice parallel line to itself. Something like that, let it go. If you want to move it in that particular direction. Holding Alt and then Shift, I can move it all the way to the side as well. And let it go. Now I've got a screw point in all of the four locations. We've actually screwed the picture to the wall. We'll go ahead and save our work. We're going to talk about copying selections. Now there are different options between copy, copy merged, paste, paste without formatting, paste in place, paste into, and paste outside. There's lots of options in Photoshop, and I get it. It's a powerful complex program. That's why you're reading the book and watching this video. So if I have the selection of my screw still there, I'm going to go up to Edit, and I can see Copy. But if I come up to Copy, you know, File Copy, it will actually copy that particular piece. So it's now part of the clipboard. So if I have an area selected, I can go ahead and hit Drag and hover over to a new tab. I actually can move it from one layer to another. If I have two particular files there. If I hit Control and co Control C or Command C on a Mac and copy the layer, I can actually go to the new tab and I can go ahead and file paste and paste it in that area. That'll paste it in the middle of my document. So let's just copy and pasting. The paste with format has to do with pasting a formatting of text. If you're copying from one area with text into another area, it'll help the formatting if you're using a text box. Here we're not using a text box. To paste in place, We'll actually paste it in the same location as the previous document. So if we want to copy it from one place to another, copy, and then hit Control, or should say Paste in place. It'll paste it in the same area as the previous image had. That can be helpful. So now that we have our selections all made and things are moving and copied over, we're going to go ahead and crop out this image for the last step to make sure we're cropping all the excess portions out. So we'll go to the Crop tool. That's the fifth tool on the Tools panel. Select the Crop tool. In the Options panel, up at the top, uh, make sure that the ratio 
is actually selected in the pop-up menu. So I'm going to go to selection, down to ratio. If there was no ratio, we could, if there was something ratio, we had numbers in here, we could actually delete the numbers or hit clear. And then we'll confirm that delete crop pixels is selected. We're going to delete the area that we don't want from this particular file. Using the handles, when drag the frame to get rid of the excess area. Got this selection there. When you're satisfied with the position and crop out all the extra junk, we go ahead and hit the check mark or hit enter to accept, or we can hit escape or the uh, cancel sign here, and that will allow me to have my particular area cropped. Now you all you have to do is save your file, go ahead and change it to your file name if you're submitting for my class, so you have the right file name uh, with the right extension, and then submit on for the assignment. So hopefully this was helpful using chapter three on working with selections. Selections are a very important part, a very crucial foundational part of what Photoshop allows you to do as you're selecting and manipulating and working with layers. As always, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Better Picks in just a few clicks. Thanks for watching Better Picks in just a few clicks. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos on how to take your photography to the next level.